Hey guys, I'm Josna, and this is part 3 of our series. In the last part, we talked about how we knock off the correct joule in the autonomous period, but in this part, I'll be showing you guys how we initialize our motors and how we move using encoder counts. The distance we move using encoder counts is determined by the VUMARC target, but in our next part of the series, Rashi is going to be talking about how we detect the VUMARC target. So if you want to see that, just watch the next part of our series. Alright, let's get started. First, we're going to initialize the motors. We're going to reverse the direction of the right side of our robot. This is because the motors rotate in the same direction, and since they're going to be facing different directions on your robot, your robot will spin in a circle if you don't follow this step. Resources online can explain this further. To reverse the motors, go to the menu under Actuators. This is where you will find all of the motor blocks. There's a block called Set Right Front Direction to Direction Reverse. We have four motors on our drivetrain, so we will reverse the two motors on the right side. On our intake mechanism, we intake the glyphs by using four wheels. We use continuous rotation servos to rotate the wheels. We have to reverse the bottom right servo and the top left servo for the same reasons that we've mentioned earlier. Now we're going to go over moving for distance. There are two main ways to do it, time and encoder counts. We use encoder counts because it's more accurate than moving for time. Below where you reverse the motors, we want to reset the encoder counts to zero before we move to make sure that the encoder counts are accurate. We will be doing this by using the set right front mode to run mode stop and reset encoder block. We will do this for all of our drivetrain motors. Since we want to move to a specific position, we're going to tell the motors to run to a position. We will use the run to position block so when the program starts, we can move to a certain position. And make sure you repeat this step for all of the drivetrain motors on your robot. To set how many encoder counts we want to travel for, we use target position. We move for at least 830 counts, but this number depends on what the VUMARC target indicates because it tells us what column in the crypto box to move to. The next step is to set the power of the motors, which we will do under the run section of the program. This action actually moves the motors of your drivetrain. You can set the power of your motors from anywhere from negative 1 to 1. We go at 1, which is the fastest speed. The next thing we do is wait 3 seconds. This gives us time to move to the desired position that we have just set using target position. After that, we stop all of the motors on our drivetrain by setting them to the power of 0. So that's how we initialize our motors and move for a distance using encoder counts. If you guys want to learn how to detect the VUMARC target, you can watch the next part of our series. Bye guys!